the superior turbinate at all. Uh, careful about how you trim the turbinate because it does have olfactory fibers on it. And um, if you can see, I'm using a J-Curet just to point in and around. Superior turbinate here, the natural ostia, the sphenoid is right there. And then this gets enlarged around into here. <clears throat> I, I don't know if in my pro section there could be a video of a frontal recess surgery or something, because I have video of frontal recess surgery for showing it. Um, I'm not sure what, what makes sense with how this works. So um, I would like to show that. So the sphenoid goes. I'm going to conclude in just a minute. Um, <clears throat> Maybe two. Um, I'm trying to show you how the opening gets made. <clears throat> this video was made almost with no edits. Um, uh, there were some quick uh, cuts in the video, but uh, it, it really was did not take very long. We didn't have very much time with the cadaver. Uh, it was after a visiting mini fellow came and we had a specimen. And we took, so you see the superior turbinate, a lot of it's present. The concha lamella is up there, and then the sphenoidotomy is widely open there. All right, down. So um, I, these steps are going to be in the PDF that you get so that you're going to be able to have them. There's 21 steps to get all the way to the frontal sinus, frontal recess. And um, this is a patient with a peculiar anatomy um, who has a 35 year old man with forehead pressure, discolored drainage positive history of GERD inhalant allergy. This is uh, a CT scan after three months of treatment with three separate 12-day courses of steroids, starting at 24 milligrams a day, tapering every two days, two months of antibiotics, doxycycline for two months, uh, budesonide, cetirizine, montelukast, based on culture-directed antibiotics. This is the best he looks. So he's gonna go backwards right afterwards with the blockage that he has. Um, the teaching points here are um, this is that middle turbinate coming over to the uh, lateral nasal wall next to the lacrimal. There are ethmoid cells here. But the frontal recess is going to drain down uh, above and behind the, what might be an ethmoid bullet. There's not even a clearly identifiable uncinate process to me. Uh, this is at the midline. Um, you can see how far back the, the, the skull base goes and how wide this area is and how that can all get open. But leaving this alone, disease will reaccumulate. In the interest of, of respect to my colleagues and time, I think um, I show the video. Oh, there's, oh, okay. So uh, the video it is, all right. Uh, I, I, I was got a big warning about this time's up sign and I just wanna be respectful as much as I can. But uh, so this is after the sphenoid ethmoid was done in this less diseased sinus, but one that's good to kind of show you. So you think, whoa, he's up to skull base. Here's the maxillary entrostomy. The sphenoid's down in here. I'm using a 70 degree scope. This looks like it's a blind alley next to the middle turbinate as an unsinate process. Uh, remnant, and uh, what I'm proposing to you is that you don't go from posterior to anterior, that once you get to the basal lamella of the middle turbinate, you come back to the front of the nose and do your frontal recess work from anteriorly. I find that that's better and safer because I'm less likely to get into the anterior ethmoid bleed and I have a broader view that I develop. So it works better. This is the medial wall of the bulla. <gasps> Oh my, look at that, there's a frontal recess. And it's right next to the middle turbinate. I'm going up right next to the cribriform plate. It's the scariest, merriest, most dangerous place to be, but I defined in my mind where it was on the imaging. And then was able to localize it again with image guidance. It wasn't just, you know, uh, we. this is my fellow uh, assisting operating, and now I'm saying to her, let go, you're pulling away the mucosa. So she lets go and then withdraws the bone and then we use a soft tissue shaver so that we're not taking away more mucosa in the area than we need to so we can get uh, closer to a good mucosalized result. Um, so I have no commercial relationship with anybody, I didn't say it, but I noticed one of the companies has their name. What the heck is that? They're so smart. They know that we're gonna teach and show. What the um, so uh, the work goes on and on, and, but you can see I'm using uh, suction and I'm, my motions are parallel and towards the orbit, not up and into the cribriform digging. Uh, those are things that you need to do to get to this frontal recess area to safely open up 
in this dangerous location, this high real estate value. And you can see there's a polyp in the frontal sinus, which is, uh, it's not brain, I can yeah, trust you, trust me. Uh, so, uh, and then the posterior frontal recess area has to be made confluent along the skull base. So some small branch of an anterior ethmoidal where the, it arborizes along the skull base, multiple uses of vasoconstrictors, but you can see a small plate of bone. I'm almost done with the video, and I want to show a superorbital crevice on the video uh, coming off. This ledge of bone needs to get removed, and you can see the opening in the track into the superorbital crevice going laterally. So you get the idea. This actually surgery was done Tuesday. <laughs> I edited it on the plane. What a pain in the took us. All right. Uh, so uh, this is just to give you an idea of what kinds of things and the dangers, the perils that are in front of you uh, with the dissection. Thank you very much for your attention. We made it to slide 52 out of 85. So understand. <laughs> Don, thank you very much. Thank yeah, you. What, uh, uh, any, first of all, any questions for Dr. Lonzo while we're setting up the next speaker? You know, what's so fun is, is there are so many different ways to do the same thing, yet it's just like a baseball swing. There's a consistent pattern of how to do it most correctly. And I love what you said about two points. One, you saw him grasping the bone in the frontal recess with graspers, and then debriding this, just the remaining soft tissue with the shaver. Key. Key is to pull those bones out and then debride the soft tissue. The other thing is the preserving the middle terminate up in the frontal recess. You're absolutely correct. You know, we all hear that the anterior belly of the digastric, which I think is still in the neck, right? That's, as far as I remember, that's the resident friend. Well, I say in rhinology, the middle turbinate's the resident friend. That's gonna lead you up to that frontal recess almost every time. So as long as you preserve that middle turbinate mucosa up in the recess, it's gonna get you there. We have plenty of time this morning. I, I enjoyed your talk so much. Thank you very much. And it's, it's uh, always entertaining.